here we are, Exodus chapter 25, day two. Friend, welcome. I am so grateful that you're here. I'm grateful to be here, and I am grateful for what I am learning about the Lord and His heart. Oh, I am enjoying Him. Friend, it is just shining in this chapter yesterday and today that the Lord has a desire to dwell, to abide with His people, to be present with his people such that he is giving Moses instructions. Like that's what we saw yesterday. Moses is up um, up on top of that mountain with the Lord. We know for 40 days, 40 nights, and the Lord is giving him instructions. And we learned there were instructions yesterday for this contribution, for this voluntary giving of the people of Israel. Why? To build a sanctuary to build this portable sanctuary called a tabernacle where the Lord will dwell with his people and where they will worship him. Oh, this is beautifully symbolic of the Lord's presence. And today we see that it is symbolic. um, And and as Hebrews 8, 5 says, it's a copy, it's a shadow of heavenly things. And I love that. But what I what I've loved most, what I'm taking away most is that we see the heart of God. He desires relationship. He desires to dwell and to fellowship with his people. He wants to be at the center and his people will be encamped all the way around him. What a beautiful, beautiful picture. And how wonderful for the people. He will always be in the center. This portable sanctuary will always be in the center of of their midst, such that how can they forget his presence? Um, That is the intent, that they will know he is present with them. All right, so that was That's quite an introduction. Now, yesterday we also learned that God began giving. He doesn't just give instructions for the sanctuary, but he began with instructions on some of the furnishings of the sanctuary. And isn't it interesting that he began with the ark, uh, the ark of the covenant. The ark is going to hold these tablets that uh, of his word, of this covenant agreement that he and the people have made together. And then we also saw the instructions for the mercy seat, which isn't really a seat. It is known as the atonement cover or the lid for the Ark of of the Covenant. And um, that is symbolic. That lid is very symbolic of where sins were forgiven by God. Now today, what did we notice? What did we observe? Well, here's instructions for a table and a lampstand. And I, I, I loved taking a look at that or at today's passage. Um, we see these instructions and, you know, I noted, I don't think I noted this yesterday, but just thinking about how that ark, the atonement cover, and now the table and the lampstand, what are they all made out of, friends? Well, uh, yesterday we saw this combination, and, and today for the table, it's made out of acacia wood, which is was just a very prevalent tree or shrub in the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, they, these were found in abundance, so that's convenient. It, but it's overlaid with gold, with pure gold. So friends, this is very, very different from the furnishings that would have been in the people's tents. The Lord's, uh, the, the, the Lord's, the Lord's, I want to call it temple. The Lord's sanctuary is filled with objects that are made of pure gold. This is special. And I think we learned something about who the Lord is uh, just by by the furnishings, right? That these are very precious. These are very valuable. 
All right, so the table, how is it to be made? Well, the table is to be made similar to the ark, as I just said, with the acacia wood, and then it is going to be overlaid with pure gold. It's slightly smaller than the ark of the covenant. The dishes, I noticed there are instructions of what the dishes are to also be made with pure gold. So why? Why a table in the sanctuary? Well, verse 30, the Lord says, And you shall set the bread of the presence on the table before me regularly. And there will be more instructions yet to come on what that looks like. Just just what the bread is. Yeah, just that set up. But this is all we need to know for today. The purpose of the table is a place to set set the bread of the presence and bread we know what that is that is the the daily sustenance that we need but this is you know god always uses very physical things to teach us spiritual lessons and here he is reminding this bread will be a reminder of spiritual sustenance and that God provides the spiritual sustenance. Presence, friend, is it, it, I don't know, presence, I'm kind of, I don't have all the words for the word present, but here's what my Bible dictionary says, face, uh, presence equals face, the presence or proximity of someone under ter- understood in the terms of face with the implication of being before or or in front of them. So the implication is being face to face. Again, this points to the fellowship of the covenant, this alliance, this friendship, this relationship, this, um, yeah, this, <laughs> this, this, I don't know, friendship is what stands out. Even though the people, it will not be the people, it will only be priests that will be here. But here is the presence, the bread of the presence, a reminder that God is present with them and he is the bread of life. Like, did you not go to, it's not in the cross references, but how can we not go to the New Testament? Uh, We've been saying all along that it's so wonderful to be on this side of the cross. And can't we just hear the words of Jesus from the gospel of John uh, when he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Love that. God is the bread of life. And we are reminded by that just in his instructions for this portable sanctuary. God is present. God is the bread of life. So similarly, we have instructions for the lampstand. And again, once again, this is made of pure gold. And I noticed, I circled it here in verse 39. It shall be made with all these utensils out of a talent of pure gold. So the lampstand and the utensils to take care of the wicks and all of that are going to require a whole talent of gold. Friends, uh, I looked that up in my Bible dictionary. A talent is a unit of weight about six, anywhere from 66 to 77 pounds. Uh, we're not quite sure the exact measurement, but it doesn't matter. That's a ton of gold. <laughs> That's a ton of gold. This is no um, wobbly lampstand. This is a hefty lampstand that will have seven lamps on it. Uh, God gives uh, very clear instructions on what this to be is to be like. I wondered if there was any symbolism to the seven lamps. It doesn't say, but my mind went back to creation, the seven days of creation. And also uh, that, you know, what is the purpose of this lampstand? Obviously, it's to give light for the priests who will be serving the Lord in the tabernacle. 
um, it is to give light. That is in verse 37. You shall make seven lamps for it, and the lamp shall be set up so as to give light on the space in front of it. And I just hear God saying in the beginning, you know, let there be light. And there was light. And I hear Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. <laughs> I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. All right. Uh, Jesus made it abundantly clear that God is the bread of life. God is the light of of life and this tabernacle, uh, the furnishings within the tabernacle are also pointing to this same idea that God is present with his people, uh, that he is the bread of life, that he is the light of life. This is this covenant is all about life and abundant life in God's presence in his presence. Oh, friends. I mean, main point today is that here are instructions for crafting the table and the lampstand and an explanation of their purpose. But what do we what do we do with this? Is this relevant for us today? Absolutely it is. It is symbolic. Uh, it is symbolic. Hebrews 8:5 tells us that it is symbolic. It says they serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God saying, see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. That's a cross reference for the last verse today. And see that you make them after the pattern for them, which is being shown you on the mountain. All right. They're not just making this up. Moses is not making this up. God is giving very clear instructions. Why? Because this is symbolic. This is symbolic of heavenly things. It's a, it's a copy if it's a pattern of heavenly things and things yet to come, things that point to Jesus Christ, who uh, will proclaim that, yes, here he is, the Son of God, the bread of life, and the light of life. Friends, it's hard for me to put into words just how meaningful it is to think and to consider and to ponder that God is present with us, that God wants to dwell and abide with his people. And we have the privilege to dwell and abide with him. Oh, friends, if we have trusted Jesus Christ, we have God's presence with us in the form of his spirit. We have his presence. We have the bread of life. We have the light of life. Like, let's talk that in the pocket of our hearts today. Here is where our hope is. Here is where the fullness of joy is in the presence, knowing that God is present with us and he will provide all that we need for today. Oh, friends, does that not give us reason to go and serve him, to worship and bow down and adore him today? Thank you.